Hello, everyone. My name is Shu Yuanyi. Currently, a second year graduate student from Fudan University in China. Today, the paper I will be presenting is titled Research on Deep Brain Stimulation in Depression. Let's begin. We can from the content. The first part I will be introduced is the deep brain stimulation (DBS), and the second part is depression. Something about pathogenesis and treatment, and the last part is integration of deep brain stimulation and brain computer interface. Okay, let's come to the first part. Deep brain stimulation is a neuromodulation technique. It is widely used to treat people with movement disorders, such as Parkinson's disease, dystonia, and essential tremors. What's more, it's a cutting edge neurosurgical technique that involves implanting electrodes into specific brain regions to modulate neural activity by delivering controlled electrical impulse to detected brain areas. DBS can restore normal neural structure and alleviate symptoms. Therefore, its precise localization and adjustable parameters make it a versatile tool for investigating brain functions and, and driving complex neural networks. Here is the second part, the depression, a prevalent mental disorder, is characterized by a persistent low mode lasting at least two weeks. Common symptoms include losing interest in previously enjoyable activities, diminished self-esteem, reduced energy levels, and unexplained physical pain. And uh, look at this. The pathogenesis of depression is very complex and has not been clear, clearly determined yet. Well, the main rules on the pathogenesis of depression include the monomy hypothesis, the neuroinflammation hypothesis, and so on. In addition to the above classic depression hypothesis, the impaired neuronal projection and functional connections between different brain regions represented by neural circuits have become the focus of the researchers. Some results from functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI, and partial emission computed tomography, PET, suggest Hypermetabolism in the subordinate cingulate context in a depressive state and uh, hyperactivity in the amygdala. The amygdala here and the uh, ventral scaptral VC and or uh, ventral striatum VS as the two most widely used aims in DBS. Firstly, the amygdala located deep within the temporal lobe of the brain serves as a central regulator of negative emotions. Or activation of the amygdala is a significant factor in the onset of anxiety disorders. DBS therapy can elevate executive amygdala activity and modulate the amygdala structure associated with anxiety-related behavioral regulation in pathological states. Moreover, a review report found that DBS treatment targeting VC or VS observed improvements in depressive symptoms during the trial. This may be related to the regulation of target of target stimulating behaviors, LVS, 
and stretchal networks. And DBS therapy may alleviate the overcompensation of reward mechanisms and cognitive control and associative networks in depressive states. The next part is BCI and DBS. The deep of the brain computer interface, BCI, is a system that established a connection between the brain and the machine, the brain and the machine, also known as brain machine interface, BMI. Quantification is done by detecting electrical or magnetic failures, hemoglobin oxygenation or parameter on the scale on the surface of the brain or within the brain. It amplifies the electrical signals of neurons within the brain and then categorizes and translates them and encodes them into a language understandable by computers and then achieves control over the organism through the reward transmission of electrical signals. BCI initially sought to provide solutions in situations where traditional interfaces are unavailable, such as cases of paralysis or lamb loss. A notable example of BCI success is its application in patients with paraplegic, as demonstrated by a study conducted by Brown University in 2012. In this image, the patient successfully employed a man controlled robotic arm to drink a beverage. Establishing a direct link between the biological brain and external devices. So the question arrives, can BCI, a highly promising immersion technology, be integrated with DBS to offer enhanced treatment options for depression patients? In my view, leveraging the precision at single neuron level provided by BCI might make it possible to observe neurons' responses to external stress conditions and timely import inhibitory signals in cases of conditions like hypothalamic paturity, adrenal, HPA, axi, hyperactivity, or amygdala overactivation to prevent further deterioration of the patient's brain sculpture and function. However, the specific operational techniques and details requires further research. And let's see the challenges and concluding part. The first and most important challenge, although the subnodal singlet gyro, SCG, and ventral scapsule VC or ventral stratum VS, as the two most widely used aims, there are still many neural projections and functional connections between brain regions associated with anxiety and depression that are unknown. Secondly, on the technological front, we still require enhancements in the size, durability, longevity, and surgical methods of stimulation electrodes. Moreover, the development of non-invasive wireless electrodes in plants and their testing on premise has opened up new prospects. And last but not least, addressing air considerations to facilitate the translation of DBS BCI integration into routine clinic process. In conclusion, deep brain stimulation builds the promise of revolutionizing our understanding of depression and offering novel therapeutic avenues for improving patients' quality of life.
I look forward to meaningful discussion and valuable interactions during this event. Thanks for your attention.